Well, apparently Microsoft does love Linux. So let's take a look at PowerShell Core version 6 in Zubuntu 17.10. So I sacrificed a virtual machine. There's no way I'm putting this on my main system, but we'll take a look. I remapped the default terminal in Zubuntu to PowerShell. And there we are, we have confirmation at the top, PowerShell version 6.6.0, copyrights Microsoft Corporation. But there is one difference to the default PowerShell in Windows, that it's not backslashes, it is forward slashes, because we have path notation of forward slash in the Unix world. The DOS world, or can we say the NT world, has a backslash for the path notation. And also it goes with the default colouring for the terminal emulator. So this is the default colouring in Zubuntu. I hope you can all see that. This is not exactly the same as PowerShell in Windows. You do have access to all the GNU commands as well. Well, PWD, print working directory, is the same on both systems from what I gather, but we can do something like 3 m and we have access to the system memory usage. Navigating around, pressing tabs also complete. That's the same, but yeah, it goes for the full path notation on home, which, yeah, it's a bit weird. Can't get used to seeing it that way. <laughs> Prefer to see the little tilde then slash the folder I'm on, it just saves a bit of writing for something I already know where I am. ls and dir, access to both commands, but then again you have that in Windows. So the command I was going to run was something I downloaded, a demo that I downloaded called memory.ps1. So system usage, hmm, I think that's slightly different to what the GNU tool was showing. Yes it is, huh, strange. Can I press Ctrl L to clear the screen? Yes, I can. You can also do CLS and clear. You can declare a variable by typing a dollar and a variable name and give it a value. So foo equals bar. Can I see what it equals? Echo foo. Ooh, that's not quite the right command, is it? There's actually a PowerShell command, isn't there? Right host. Something foo. Something bar. You get a list of processes and you can pipe it off to a file. Oh, <laughs> I meant to name it .txt actually. Yeah, close enough. Let's get rid of the old one, ps.txr. Uh, ls, <laughs> dir, whatever. I can't get used to these uh, two different shells. Uh, I want to read that file. Hmm, how can I do that? Does cat work? Actually, I don't necessarily want cat. I want something like less because you've got more control over that less ps.txt yes <laughs> this is kind of a weird way to use PowerShell combined with GNU commands so here's a thought can I take a PowerShell command and then pipe it to a GNU command yeah you can <laughs> why wouldn't you so look this is all basics this is all just basic stuff at the moment okay this is all fun and well but something Microsoft are touting in a video that I had a quick glance at because it's 50 minutes long and I was not going to sit there and watch the whole lot of it, was something about the PowerShell demos. They've pre-written a load of scripts, a load of useful scripts. So this one they were going on about was crontab demo. So this is being able to create cron jobs using PowerShell or using this module in PowerShell. Look, I know it's not too difficult to create cron jobs programmatically or even manually in Bash, but look, let's take a look at this feature and you can see a comparison. I have already gone and downloaded it and installed it as a module. So getting the cron job shows that there are actually no cron jobs on my system. So let's use the create cron job, or new cron job I should say. Dash username, and I do like the fact you can tab to autocomplete on the arguments. Just some useless command I'm going to type out. Uh, the example they give is removing the contents of the temp folder, but yeah, that happens automatically at reboot. You can set an hour and minute, so dash hour one, that's one o'clock in the morning, dash minute 15. Okay, so there we are, we have the cron job created. So using crontab I can see the job exists. And using the equivalent PowerShell command, get cron job, again the command exists. So in terms of actually removing the cron jobs, um, not quite as simple as I might have expected, you actually seem to have to name out the, the entire cron job. Of course, easy enough to do when I've only got one cron job listed, but what if I have multiple cron jobs here? Well, I'm going to have to look at the instruction manual for this one. So something like that, maybe. Yes, so that's piped it through to where object. And then pipe the command through to remove cron job. 
So I'm not sure I want to remove it. Yes, no, or, or actually another way you can actually force it to dash force. So now if I get list of cron jobs, uh, there's nothing there. So there you go, that's done. And that was the idea of using the cron job module that had been pre-written for use in Linux or PowerShell in Linux. Was it easier than doing it with Bash? Uh, no, not really. And honestly, it didn't really solve much of a problem. I suppose it's showing that this feature is available, yes. So would I be willing to drop Bash and move straight to PowerShell? No, not really. I'm perfectly happy using Bash, and to be honest, I find it quite a faff with the much longer commands in PowerShell. But no, the point I could see this being useful is for a Windows administrator who has to use Linux virtual machines, for example, in cloud computing or a virtualized server. So they would be able to use a familiar shell interface and with similar commands. Microsoft are not doing so well in the server world compared to the desktop world, and a feature like PowerShell in the Linux could very well help them. I'm not entirely sure how it does help them, but it may well. That was a look at PowerShell running in Linux. Thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.